I want to speak about is one of the most rampant crimes of society today. It's called social fraud engineering. And it usually occurs through someone receiving an email from an outside source that ends up being a fraudulent email. Its purpose is to make this individual take a specific action, usually in a short period of time, and usually results in them having to wire transfer funds to a fraudulent account. The email is usually personalized to the recipient. Uh, it uses a look-alike address, in other words, the email address from the sender looks like something that's valid. And a lot of times, the email looks like it's from someone the individual either knows or is familiar with. What you should really look for in these types of emails, if you should ever be a recipient of one, is number three things, basically. One is authority. The, the email will usually stress the authority of the individual, either being the chairman of the board, the president, or senior vice president, or someone else in the executive ladder that's asking this individual to take this action. It will also have a sense of urgency, some time pressure on it, indicating that this action must be taken within a very short period of time because either it's, required, it's involving an acquisition or the payment of, of an invoice or possibly paying off some type of a debt. And also it emphasizes the third component, which is secrecy. It must be kept confidential for legal or strategic reasons. What steps would you take if you receive some type of an email like this? The first thing you should do is look at the email address itself. Make sure it's valid. Go through the email address to make sure there are no misspellings, that there aren't any letters or numbers or symbols that are added to the email address or spaces between numbers and letters and so forth that would change that email address. Secondly, what you want to do is confirm that the email is valid. What you do not want to do is respond directly to the individual who sent the email to you asking them to confirm whether or not this is their actual instruction because you're responding back to the fraudster and of course they can confirm it's a valid instruction. So use a method different than what you received and the way you could do that is by either by picking up the phone and calling the individual that you think sent the email request to you or send a text message to the individual or send an entirely different email to the supposed sender asking them to confirm that these instructions are valid. Recently in a conversation I had with Greg Arnold, who was a senior vice president of FB Insure, he indicated to me he was a recipient of just such an email. So Greg, as I understand, uh, you were recently a target of a spare phishing attempt through a fraudulent email that Correct. came to you uh, requesting you to take certain actions? Yes. Yep. Uh, three or four weeks ago I got an email from that looked like it was from the CEO of the agency. Uh, requesting that I uh, wire some money to him as he had asked me to do earlier that day. Um, he hadn't asked me earlier in the day, so that was, was tip number one. Uh, you received the email and you, you checked with him. Uh, what, uh, what, what questions did you ask him and so forth? Well, the first question I asked him, I said, you know, did you send me an email earlier in the day? And then he said no. And I said, well, I, I just got an email that looks like it's from you requesting that I wire some money. So we obviously, you know, then started to look at it a little more closely and looked at the email to, to try to find out what exactly was going on. One, to make sure there was no one inside of our network mm -hmm. uh, that was sending these emails. Well, luckily for us, Greg was on his toes. He decided to contact Russ directly to confirm these instructions, only to find out that Russ never did send him the email in the first place.